Now we can post-process the cell center values of the primary unknowns to produce useful visualizations. We will start by using CFD post, so we can double click on results in the workbench window to open it. Once it opens, we want to start by adjusting our view to best display the visualizations. In the outline list on the left, under user locations and plots, uncheck wireframe to remove it from the view. Next, under FFF, we can see a list of our boundaries. To start, make sure all of the boundaries are unchecked except for wall. Then, right click on wall and select edit. In the details pane on the left side of the screen, we can edit how this boundary is displayed. Navigate to the Render tab and change Transparency to 0.7. Next, click Apply in the bottom left corner. In our view, we can see that this has made the boundary see-through. This is useful as it lets us visualize the edges of the artery while still being able to see any visualizations inside. First, we want to visualize the pressure and velocity in the flow domain. A useful visualization can be obtained easily with a volume rendering. To start, under the Views icon at the top of the visualization window, change from one single visualization to two side-by-side -side views. We can see that this gives us two views next to each other. This is useful for comparing two flow properties. In the top bar, Check the Synchronize Camera button and ensure that the Synchronize Visibility option is deselected. If we now use the middle mouse button in either of our views to rotate it, we can see that it is synced across both views. We can now work to visualize the flow properties. In the top bar, select Insert and choose Volume Rendering. Name this Velocity Rendering. In the details pane, ensure that the variable is velocity. Click apply to create the visualization. Next, create another visualization by clicking insert in the top bar again and choosing Volume Rendering. Name this Pressure Rendering. This time, in the Details pane, ensure that the variable is Pressure and click Apply. We can now work to view these renderings side by side. First, left click inside of the first view. In the outline on the left, 
ensure that only velocity rendering and wall are selected along with default legend view next left click inside of the second view and ensure that only pressure rendering and wall are selected Again, still including the default legend view. This allows us to see each visualization independently. Volume renderings create a series of slightly transparent planes along each coordinate direction on which the selected variables are plotted. This allows us to get a good initial understanding of the flow properties. As we rotate the view using the middle mouse button, we can see the direction of these planes changes. In the bottom right corner of either view, click the green Y axis to get a view of the top of the artery. From this view, we can see some of the key trends in the flow. Near the branching section, we can see that the pressure increases significantly. If we zoom in by right-clicking and dragging to select this region, we can see a corresponding low-velocity stagnation point. Click the Fit View button along the top to reset the view. Along the right side, near the bulge, we can see a low velocity region. This matches expectations and is an effect of the recirculation zone in that area. We will investigate this further later. Interestingly, the low velocity recirculation zone near the right path does not correspond to a high pressure region as would be expected by the Bernoulli equation. Importantly, as the fluid moves along the artery, it experiences greater and greater viscous losses. This phenomenon is neglected in the Bernoulli equation and therefore it cannot be used to predict flow quantities in viscosity dominated regions like this recirculation zone. This leads to a low velocity region without high pressures. We can rotate the view to get a better understanding of other components of the flow domain if necessary, particularly further investigating the high pressure stagnation region. Next, we can look at velocity vectors as they are intuitive to visualize. While volume renderings gave us a general look at the flow properties over the entire domain, we want to investigate things more carefully. So we will create a plane on which to plot the vectors. Under locations in the top bar, select plane. Name this midplane. In the details pane, we can adjust the location of the plane. We want to create it so that it approximately splits the artery in half. To do this, change method to three points. This allows us to use the location of three points to define the plane. I have found that the following points work well, and we'll enter them now.
With the points entered as shown here, click Apply to create the plane. We can now create vectors on this plane. To do this, click Vectors in the top bar. Name this Midplane Vectors. In the Details pane, under Locations, select Midplane. Ensure that Sampling is set to Equally Spaced. And change Number of Points to 1000. Under the Symbol tab, Change the size to 0.2. And check the Normalize Symbols box. Finally, click Apply. At the top of the view plane, return to only a single view. In the Outline tab, uncheck Velocity Rendering and ensure Midplane Vectors is checked instead. We can then reset the view by clicking the green Y axis in the bottom right corner and clicking the Fit View option in the top. This gives us a good view of our new vector visualization. We can see that the flow generally follows the path of the artery as expected. This allows us to better visualize the separation region, however. Right click and drag to select an area around the recirculation region and release to zoom in. We can see that the flow is clearly recirculating because of the flow separation, with vectors moving in the opposite direction of the exit. Using the middle mouse button, we can rotate the view slightly. This shows that the vectors are actually pointing out of the plane meaning this recirculation region is really three-dimensional, including strong contributions in the Y direction. If we zoom out slightly, we can see that the rest of the flow, even in the other branching path, is strongly two-dimensional, with negligible components in the Y direction along this plane.